Hello, hello, everybody. It's 11.55 in five minutes. We're going to get started with Easy Prophecy. I'm excited, but yet I'm sad simultaneously because today is our last day of Easy Prophecy. But we have a very, 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 very exciting, exciting passage. The word exciting has been overused, I know. I just can't think of it. It's epic. It's exciting. It's all of that good stuff. But we're going to be looking at Daniel, the 12th chapter today. And we have an awesome pastor who's going to share with us uh, through the word of God, what God has to say about that. But just before we do that, which we'll start at 12, we need you guys to jump on and to begin to share, uh, share, 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 so that we can get as many people as possible to see what's happening. God bless, God bless, God bless. It is 11.56 where I am. You got four minutes and 11 seconds. So I'm actually going to uh, go and grab some water and then I'll be right back. <laughs> so we're ready to go. I actually, I need, to, I need to share this myself, actually. I mean, let me, let me be obedient. Uh, yeah, okay. Share. Three more minutes, everybody, and we'll be ready to start. All right, we got two more minutes and we'll be ready to start. Come on, everybody, jump on and share what you're doing. Awesome. Good stuff. Good to see you sharing. Don't be stingy and don't be selfish. It's not right to get on here and not hit share. It's not right. You got to share this. Hey, what's up, David? Kimon, what's up, bro? Orlean, you've been faithful, girl. John Coxum, so glad you could join us. Marcia Smith says she's excited. Blake, I'm not going to even try to pronounce your last name, brother. But you said you'll be back too. <laughs> he went to go get him some water. Let's go. That's right. Let's go. Say something good, man. Send, send some positive vibes in the thread. Ah, uh, We got one more minute and we'll be ready to start. Easy prophecy. How do we sound? Do we sound good? Is the lighting good? Can you see us good? Can you hear us good? If, if you can, let us know. Can you see us good? Can you hear us good? Good stuff. Yes, thank you. Did you share? John Copeson, I see you're on, brother. Did you share, though? I want to make sure you share it, man. Yes, Tamika, how you doing? Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing, sharing and liking. All those things are good. We've got about 30 seconds. And I'm just going to go ahead and stop this right now. 30 seconds for station identification, right? <laughs> you are, you have joined the Easy Prophecy. Easy Prophecy. I don't know if it's a seminar. I don't even know what you want to call it, Pastor, but um, I'm going to take you off unmute here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 12 o'clock. Welcome to Easy Prophecy. Uh, this thing has been amazing. It's been a blessing all week long. The Lord's been really, 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 really good. I have heard the books of Daniel and Revelation 
like in new light all week long. And it's really, I mean, I've had the best seat in the house. And today I'm really excited because we have one of my favorite preachers who's here with us. I know it, y'all thinking like, oh, he says that every day. I'm serious. Yeah. Like, but I mean, I, hold on. Since I selected the speakers, I know who my favorites are. <laughs> so I have another one of my favorite speakers uh, that, that's here with us today. And just before we introduce her, I want to give you an opportunity to be able to see what we have for you. I want to share my screen right now. There is a handout that you just absolutely have to get. It is the Easy Prophecy Handout. Uh, I believe it's on the screen right here. I mean, we have all of the lessons that are here. Uh, I actually pulled up the wrong one. But I think all 12 lessons are there. And you want to make sure you get a copy of that. The way to get a copy of that is in the thread, in the Facebook uh, live feed uh, thread. There will be a link there. And all you need to do is just uh, click on that link, give us your email, and we will send you um, these materials. Let me tell you why I think it's a good idea for you to have them, especially if you are a church leader or a church pastor or just a Bible student. But I specifically want to talk to my pastors and church leaders. Listen, man, this is good stuff. I don't even know if there's anything out there that exists like this. But you literally have, go to YouTube. You can download all the presentations. We load them up to YouTube uh, so that you can pick them up at any time. Or you can go on our Facebook page and watch them. And you have the study guides. That says to me, as a pastor, that means I got some Wednesday night prayer meeting material. That means I got some Tuesday night Bible study material. That means I've even got some sermon material. I got some small group material. You can look over the stuff and the stuff is comprehensive. It's not just a bullet point here and there. I Man, there's some really, really, really good stuff in there. And we want to encourage you to get that. Now, without further ado, a proper, this is what my folks say in England. They say proper. If someone's like off the chain to dope, they say it's proper. It's like we, we have a proper anointed preacher that's with us today and teacher, Pastor Lola Johnston. I am not going to call her by her maiden name. She's been married not even a year, I don't think. She, I only think she, is it been a year? No, 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 not a year yet. Okay, all right. So you got, listen, there's a year of grace that you have to give people. Like I almost, I almost tripped on it before. I was like, Lola Moore Johnston. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, okay. but we're excited. Yo, listen, what's going on in your life? What's going on in your world? What are you doing? Tell the people who Lola Moore Johnston is. Come on, talk, talk a little bit about yourself. Man, well, I'm just excited at the power of God. Um, I have been doing so much lately that I'm so excited about. Um, as you may know, I do lead some Bible studies online. And so we've done a couple of them. We just did a 21 day Daniel challenge. So, I, oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. From Facebook. Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Really excited about leading people through the word of God. Um, I've also um, been discovering my personal passion to help other people discover God's dream for their lives. Mm. And so we've been doing some great things. Oh, I can't wait to share. Uh, we have an initiative for women who are incarcerated, which I was excited to hear what you're doing for the people of Cleveland. Um, yeah. Incarcerated populations. I would love to connect with you and share some of the resources that I've discovered. Absolutely. Um, for incarcerated brothers and sisters. So I'm just believing God that this is the season of the open door, Myron. God is enabling his people to do great exploits. Wasn't that yesterday with Ty? Yeah, great exploits. <laughs> his people. I received that word and this is the year of the open door. So I'm receiving it uh, for Lola Moore Johnston Ministries. You can find more about me at lolajohnston.com if you want to participate in anything. I'd love to share with you what's that website again it's lolajohnston.com lolajohnston.com and uh thank you lola that's a great segue most of you know this is being sponsored by the grace community seventh day adventist church really excited to hear about what lola's doing uh to help alleviate some of the situations we have with mass incarceration the imprisonment of people uh i, I would really call it the enslavement of people here in cleveland uh pastor um one out of every two black men has a felony uh in the city of cleveland uh, which you already know the entrailments that come with that. And so we bought an old Kmart. We're trying to retrofit it into a double zero. And I say double zero, I'm talking about all the way down to early childhood education up to a master's level degree programming of online education, as well as high school educational programming. And so if the spirit of God leads you to help bless us to be able to break ground on that property this year, uh, we're trying to raise $520,000 by the end of the year. 
uh, just go to our Facebook page, click donate, or go to our church page, which is readysetgrace.com, Grace Community, readysetgrace.com. And um, uh, just let the Lord lead you to be a blessing to us. Now, without further ado, we're anxiously excited to jump into this word today, the last chapter in the book of Daniel, Daniel, the 12th chapter. I'm going to say a prayer for you, Pastor, and then we're going to loose you and let you go. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much uh, for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hearts have felt really just in your word. There's power in your word, Father. Your word says that when the word goes forth, it will not return void. And right now, Pastor Lola has a word from the Lord concerning Daniel 12 that we're going to study about right now. I'm just praying that you give her clarity of thought, mind, and heart. I pray for the rest of us who are listening on the receiving end, that the Spirit of God will give us a hunger and thirst for righteousness, that whatever the Lord has for us, that we will reach out and grab it right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this time. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for technology. I pray that everything works well. People receive the message. The message is disseminated. And at the end, your name's glorified. This is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Yeah. Daniel 12. Come on now. Yeah. You know, I want to begin with a thank you. All right. Uh, to you and the people of the Glenville Church, to your team. Grace community uh, now. <laughs> Grace community. I'm sorry, off brand. Grace mm -hmm. community. Because you have invited us to see Daniel in Revelation like I've never seen it before. Mm. And in listening to the presentations that have been given, I have learned so much. Yes, me too. Especially Absolutely. Especially the fact that the gospel is deeply entrenched in the mm -hmm. book of Daniel, especially mm -hmm. in the prophecies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as I read to study for today, I saw these chapters like I have never seen them <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever. Yes. Yes. So I just have to say thank you, thank you, thank you for the initiative that has caused me to grow in my understanding of scripture. And I'm so excited to share what God has been talking to me about. Awesome, um, thank God. So when we look at Daniel 12, as it's been talked about by Seth and by Ty, we understand Daniel 12 is a part of a three chapter trilogy. It's a mm -hmm. part of a, a block. And um, context is king here to help us to get the most after, out of Daniel 12. Now, you can read Daniel 12 by itself and shout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you see it in context, it is so rich and deep that I think that God is going to allow us to unearth some of the jewels that are in there today. All right. Okay. So when we find Daniel in chapter 10, he's been grieving for three weeks. He's been mourning. He hasn't eaten anything savory, nothing sweet. Um, he hasn't anointed himself. He's grieving because he still does not understand what God was talking about through Daniel 7 to 9. Okay. He, he hears it, but he has been grieving. Mm. And at first, when I saw it, I thought it was because Daniel was afraid. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. thought he was scared of, of what the people would do or what the kingdoms would do. Right, what right, right, right. Upheaval was happening. So I'm trying to understand, but I realized that Daniel is someone who has shown courage and moral fortitude since we met him in Daniel 1. That's right, that's right. He shows up in Daniel 1 to the king's table. He's a eunuch, which means that his manhood has been taken, mm -hmm. okay? It means that he has seen family members die. He's seen mm -hmm. his whole town be decimated, but he still shows up at the table mm -hmm. and sees a choice that he's been given as to dishonor God with what he's eating. And he's like, man, I can't eat that. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. He stands up on the first day. First and day. Says that, no, I'm serving God. I'm not going to dishonor God. He goes throughout the book. He and his friends are showing this moral fortitude. They are not scared of people. So mm -hmm. my question is, when we meet him in Daniel 10, what is it that can get him so off kilter that he's been mourning for three weeks? What is oh, that's it? A good, that's a good question. It's, yeah, yeah. It's not, and I realize it's not the people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not the earth events. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that Daniel wonders if the foolishness of the people have run out the faithfulness of God. Oh, okay. my goodness. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm about to shout right here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when he's, when he's mourning 
and hoping that God is going to continue with his people over these three weeks. The Bible says that an angel is dispatched when he starts that morning. Mm -hmm. The angel is dispatched on the first day, but held up in this fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And finally, because Michael comes in and helps, the angel is able to come and address Daniel's concern. Okay, mm -hmm. He's concerned whether or not he has run out the faithfulness of God with the people. Mm. And this is the answer that is given. Oh, mm. 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 Rich. Mm. So look, mm. and, and, and Ty, Ty is the one who just opened my eyes to it. I see with new eyes now. Yes, yes, that yes, yes. The interpretive key of scripture is this rich and deep everlasting love of God that is demonstrated in covenant and unrelenting faithfulness. Mm -hmm. That's how God demonstrates his love in covenant and unrelenting faithfulness. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm reading through and when we have read through Daniel 10 and 11 in the past and all of Daniel, even all the mm -hmm. prophecies, we have looked at the events. We've tried to tease out who the countries are. We wanted to tease out the mm -hmm. times and, mm -hmm. and when things start and when things end. But it is important for us to understand that this word is released to Daniel in answer to the question, have we run out the faithfulness of God? Okay? Wow. So, so <laughs> I mean, when you go there, you're like, oh, my God. So, so the angel uses Daniel 11 to talk about what's going to happen. And I want you to look at this, that there is a word, this, um, this, this, this verb for standing up that happens all throughout Daniel 11. Okay. So in Daniel 11, two, three kings arise in Persia. Okay. Mm -hmm. Daniel 11, three, a mighty king arises who will rule with great dominion. Mm -hmm. Daniel eleven seven. from mm -hmm. a branch of her roots, one shall arise in his place who mm -hmm. shall come with an army. OK, Daniel eleven eleven. who shall muster this king uh, that they're describing in this uh, in this verse? They will muster or cause to stand up a great multitude. Right. Verse 14, in those times, many shall rise up against the king of the south. So in 11, 11 is covering all these people who are going to be standing up to show who they are. Mm -hmm. All of these people who will stand up to show dominion. All these people who will stand up to, to get counted. These people who will stand up to, to conquer and to make sure that they come. Uh, Ty said to make themselves great and exceedingly great. Mm -hmm. And when we get to Daniel chapter 12, verse one, the Bible says, and at that time, Michael will stand up. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Oh, my goodness. Mercy. Come on now. So in 11, people are standing up. Yes, yes. People are standing up and they're having victories, but they are being overcome. They're mm -hmm. having victories, but then someone else has a victory afterward. And we can get so caught up in all of the people who will arise that we don't understand that in chapter 12, verse 1, we have somebody who's going to stand up to. Oh, oh and yes. stands up. Yes, oh, yes, yes. And yes. when he stands up, the Bible mm -hmm. says, there's going to be a time of tribulation. Yes, there will. But when he stands up, he causes us to stand up to. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Listen, this week has been oh so my rich. God. The week has been so rich because we understand that heaven is not about uh, 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 making itself great at the expense of others. Mm. But when God is exalted, mm. he causes us to rise too. Oh my. Conquers oh my. for our benefit as well. Come on. Come on. So when Jesus is raised, if you go back to the resurrection, he raises with the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Mm -hmm. But the grave and death are not, con you know, they're not constraining him. They mm. constrain us. So mm. he's coming up with some keys that will free us as well. So, mm. oh 
oh my goodness. So when you see Daniel 12, 1, you see Michael stand up. And when he stands up, he causes us to stand up too. Mm. It's important for us to understand that the whole climax of the chapter is not these countries and what they're going to do and mm. not the little horn and what it's going to do. Well, in spite of all of that things that the world will do and what the devil will try, that we have somebody who's going to fight for us as well. Yes. But when he stands up, he is more powerful than any country, is more powerful than any multitude. He's more powerful. So we don't have to worry about when they stand up. I want to know when he's going to stand up. <laughs> he's going to get up. Because I know that when he gets up, I can get up too. Mm -hmm. And look at this, the yes. Bible says, even at that time, look at this, that your people will be delivered. But in verse two, it says, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth, they gonna get up too. Which means that we don't have to be afraid that they gonna kill us. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have we sat around tables <laughs> and shaken in our boots because we afraid that they gonna kill us? Yes. The Bible lets us know that being connected with heaven gives us superpower. Come on, that means yeah. that death can't even hold us. Yes, yes, yes. We don't have to be afraid of death because when Michael stands up, we stand up too. Now, <laughs> this is this is the part that we need to emphasize. And All what right. the Lord showed me was we need to talk about the concept of remnant. Okay. Okay. All right. Now we talk about the concept of remnant because um, in my growing up and understanding prophecy, I have always heard that there will be a remnant people. There will be a remnant people, that it is a future reality of individuals who will be the last of the last. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. they they will, they will survive whatever, but they will be the last of the last. But that is inconsistent with the spirit of remnant in the word of God. Mm -hmm. Because we learn that God always preserves unto himself a remnant. Mm -hmm. Now, what I learned, I learned in, in the terms of cloth, right? Mm -hmm. You cut a piece of cloth and you're trying to make a dress or something like that, and you have a bolt of cloth, and yeah. at the end of the bolt, there is a remnant, okay? It is the last piece of cloth. The cloth is not going to regenerate itself. That is it. That's it. But that's inconsistent with what we see here, right? Mm -hmm. It's inconsistent with scripture. Mm -hmm. Remnant is actually a living term. It is a, it is an organism or organismal term. It, it okay. is a living term. Watch this. It describes something that has been so beat down and burned that it should not be able to get up again. But when you look at it and give it a while, a little sprig or twig. Still oh my God. That's remnant. <laughs> it should be dead. Mercy. But there is a life force down on the inside of it that keeps it alive. Hallelujah. And so when we think about Daniel 12 and we think about remnant, we realize that our connection with God puts us in connection with this power that mm. keeps us alive when we should have been dead. Oh. <laughs> you think about the story of God's faithful the ages and you realize that we should be extinct there should not be one faithful person to god for everything that people Go ahead, that. <laughs> but oh my goodness even when you thought that there was not anybody left somebody stands up and they yes. god yes. And look at this Remnant means that there is a life force that God puts on the inside of us that keeps us. Oh my! Stuff that should kill us. Oh no, God! Stop right there and just say thank you, God. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. oh my goodness! Oh. I'm still alive today. That I survived. Oh, thank you, God. I made it. Yes, 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 yes. Guess what? 
Michael represents that <laughs> you don't have to be afraid of if they're going to kill you. You don't mm. have to be afraid if they're going to chip you. You don't have to be afraid and, and, and you're going to run to the mountains in order to avoid uh, unnecessary uh, pain. But if you're in the city and they come in your house and they put you in a concentration camp, you don't have to be, because you got something within me that holds the rain. Oh. <laughs> something within me that banishes pain. Oh my God, There's something down on the inside that keeps you. Oh man, Second Corinthians, we're troubled on every side. We're not distressed. Yes. We're perplexed, but not in distress despair, prosecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not just, we have this treasure in earthly vessels. vessels. That's right. Oh my goodness. Mm. That, under, that understanding right there is the antidote for fear. <laughs> it's the antidote for fear. Oh, my, my, what my, my, my. am I afraid of? Mm. What am I afraid of? Mercy. What am I afraid of? If, if, God is committing himself to be with me like that, then why am I afraid? Come on, sis. Why am I making other people scared? Yeah. Why am I looking at all of this stuff around mm. me and say, oh God, I hope I make it. Listen, none of this is contingent upon the people of God working it out for themselves. That's right. That's they right. don't have to figure none of it out. We trying to figure, okay. I had a family member of mine when I was growing up who had a little area in the woods where they would put canned goods. So just in case, you know, the call went out that they would have something to eat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. People, you know, that, 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 that try to figure out ways that they can, you know, uh, uh, you know survive the last days and, and make sure. That's not up to us. Ah, uh, come on now. That's not come up on now. To us. And we don't have to worry about any of that. You need to oh, take that food and feed somebody. <laughs> listen, okay? Because some people are hungry, okay? <laughs> the bottom line is, and all we have to concern ourselves with is that Michael's going to stand up. Yes. Period. Period. And when he stands up, everything concerning us will be taken care of. It's Mercy. going to be handled. Mercy, God. Oh, the poor Daniel. He's still looking like, Lord, Daniel. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get it, Jesus. I don't understand. <laughs> when in the world's going to happen? I, I don't understand. But, but the angel, uh -huh. oh my goodness. The angel has given Daniel this message for a purpose. Okay? And I'm I'll just shout if I want to shout. Whatever. You're Look. Go right on ahead. <laughs> Who better uh -huh. to deposit this message in the heart and mind of than Daniel, who has spent a night with lions and was <laughs> <laughs> Who better to give it to than Daniel? Yeah. Who has gone through three and four different administrations and yeah. Ever been uh, uh, thrown out in the upheaval? Who better Who than better? Daniel? Yeah, seeing his friends stand in the fiery furnace because they were faithful, and the Bible says they didn't even smell like smoke. Who better than Daniel? <laughs> so look at this. Uh -huh. God is giving us a love letter through Daniel uh -huh. because his life story is proof positive that God can do it. Yes, yes. So looking at this story of all of this foolishness that's going to go on and, and, and God saying he's going to prevail, the very person who's delivering the mail is the testimony that God is faithful to perform. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, Daniel, who don't understand <laughs> Daniel don't understand it because the mail is not for him. Mm. It's only a vehicle because we need it. Because mm. we haven't slept with lions. At least I haven't. Mm -hmm. I haven't been through the fire and the flood. But because he was, and his story is replete in here of God's faithfulness through everything, through people talking about him, through people trying to undermine him, mm -hmm. through physical danger, 
that God can keep him, preserve him to himself. And yes. all of that lets us know that the prophecy that he is releasing here is sure and sure. Mm. Okay. Mm. Mm. Again, what are we afraid of? Oh, boy. What are we scared of? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So poor Daniel gets here and is still asking questions, right? Mm -hmm. But I realized that in four, right, in four and five, okay. he's probably asking questions internally, right? So, so verse six says, how long uh, that there was two men on the riverbank, verse five, and then one asks the other, how long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be, okay? okay. This is the ringing question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is delay that mm -hmm. has caused Daniel to be afraid that he's run out God's faithfulness. So this, the delay is really the question, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they're posing this question to one another, and the angel that Daniel saw does something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Bible says Daniel sees this angel above the river, and the angel swears to God. <laughs> he lifts both his hands. He swears to heaven that the time period that they talked about was real. Look, he doesn't swear against the earth. The earth ain't going to make it. He don't swear to Daniel. Daniel is not a high enough power. He swears to God. There is this covenant that mm. God is keeping with himself to mm. be faithful to us. Mm. <laughs> oh. Say that again, sir. Say it again. Say it again now. There is a covenant that God is keeping with himself to be mm. faithful. Look, remember when Abraham receives covenant from God. Mm. And Abraham is told to cut the, all of these all of these animals in half, right? Yes, yes, yes. He's a tort. God didn't ask Abraham to go through the pieces himself. Why? Mm. Because covenant means, or, or that practice meant, may I become like one of these animals if I break my side. I break the covenant, yes. If I break it, right? Yeah. Don't make Abraham go through that because Abraham going to break the covenant tomorrow, right? <laughs> so, Abraham, you don't get to go through. There's a torch of God's spirit. That goes through the pieces. Yes. Yes. That goes through the pieces. God offers himself as the guarantee of the covenant. Oh, man. Oh, man. And to cover the fact mm. that we are going to break it, mm. he cuts himself off to oh. pick my side of the deal. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Woo! Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look, look, look. So, 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 so he doesn't swear to Daniel. He doesn't include Daniel in this swear, in this, in this uh, covenant in, in 12. He swears to heaven and makes an oath with himself. <laughs> I will keep this. This is how this is going to go. And it's a heavenly transaction. Mm -hmm. Earth receives the benefit. Oh, bless his name. <laughs> it's important. It's important. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you know, a couple of verses uh, uh, up here, it says those who are found written in the book will mm -hmm. get the benefit, right? So most of us are wondering how in the world do we get in the book, right? And most of us are going to make that a works-oriented situation. I got to keep a day. I got to keep a diet. You know, I got to keep my body a certain way and all this stuff. They are diet and some dress. <laughs> yes, they are a dress. Oh, thank you. I'm going to use that. That's my, <laughs> I'm going to keep a, a day, a diet, or I'm going I'm to make sure my dress is right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Help trying to make more. it about me and what I'm going to do. Yeah. And when heaven talks about these things, they understand that we have no power to affect any of it. So, so he swears to heaven. Mm. He makes a covenant with himself. God makes a covenant with himself that mm. he's going to keep this thing and it's going to work out, right? But Daniel, poor Daniel, still want to know how it's going to happen. <laughs> he's still yeah. asking questions. How is this going to go down? Daniel is concerned for his people. You know, yeah. Yeah. he has a pastor's heart. He has yes, a heart. He's looking at his people. He understands that they are prone to wander. He get, mm -hmm. you know, he understands. 
But God is trying, I believe that God through this angel is trying to let him know that it is not based upon your faithfulness, it's based on mine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. based on my faithfulness and amen, that. Amen, amen. Sure. So then he uses the rest of the chapter to then talk about these time periods, okay? Um, verse seven, I heard the man clothed in linen, linen who was above the waters. He held up his right hand. He, he has this swear, right? Or he has this, this oath that he calls. And then he says that it will be for a time, times, and half a time. We've seen that before. Time, time, half a time. That's at 1260 years, right? But then he gives Daniel a few more keys. Um, Daniel 8, uh, Daniel 11, excuse me, Daniel chapter 12, verse mm. 8 says, I didn't understand. So he asks again, what shall be the end of these things? The angel is trying to push him away. Go your way for the words are closed up and sealed to the end of time. Okay, many shall be purified, made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of those wicked shall understand, but the wise will understand. So Daniel, you don't have to be upset or worry about your not understanding. Mm -hmm. The people who need it will get it. Will get it. I'll take care of the people. Yeah, who need yeah, it, yeah. They will yeah. get it. Yeah. Um, there's this, this, um, I'm, and I'm missing it right now as I'm looking, but there is a reference here to people running to and fro and knowledge will increase in that time. Mm -hmm. And I'm, like I said, I'm missing it because I'm over here shouting. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know when you read it and for those who are listening, when you read that part, scholars. Would verse say, four. Verse four. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. As scholars have suggested that that running to and fro is not necessarily traveling with bodies. It's actually the eyes moving back and forth and an increase in literacy. Mm -hmm. So as people are coming into the information age, mm -hmm. it's going to be that time that knowledge will increase. So mm -hmm. Daniel does not have to worry that the individuals who need the message will be given additional capacity to Let's understand see. the message and be fine. OK, mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. trying to give Daniel some words of comfort so he'll be OK. But Daniel, again, has a pastor's heart. He wants to know everything's going to yeah, be yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So let me continue. So um, verse 11. And from that, from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away. And the abomination of desolation is set up. There shall be 1,290 days. So we've heard the time, times and half a time was the 1260. We have this 1,290 days, 1290. But then he gives another time period in verse 12. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. I'm even looking at the angel like, man, you're really trying to get Daniel off your trail. Like, dude, you're not going to understand this. You're not going to get it. Because when I was reading it, I almost didn't get it. So I got some help. Um, there's a book, um, Secrets of Daniel. Oh, yes. Jacques Ducan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I've Thank got it. Thank you. Thank you, God. This will help oh, you. Yes. Oh, yes. And I'll tell you, Dr. Dukan walked me through this thing, okay? Um, so what happens is the, the three time periods kind of coincide. Um, the 1260 years, this is the time of the little horn exerting his power. It lasts till 1798, okay? Mm -hmm. And then we realize from here that the 1335, the three, 1,335 years and the 1,290 years run concurrently because right. they start at the same time. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we take the end of the 1335, mm -hmm. Lord have mercy, mm -hmm. which lands us at 1844. OK, mm -hmm. and I'm going I'm to try to work it out. Like I said, I'm working it out myself. Mm -hmm. Lands us at 1844. We realize that these 1335 and 1290 are the end of the 2300 day prophecy. Mm 
Amen. These all occur within those 2300. And that's what Daniel was burdened about. That's what yes. stressed him out. Right. Because it was a long time. That, yes. that, that yes. was a long time. That's right. So the way that we arrived there, ladies and gentlemen, he talks about the, uh, the abolition of the daily sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That happened in 508 CE, the common era or um, AD, wh mm -hmm. which was what we would call it, 508. So both the 1335 and the 1290 begin there. So mm -hmm. when you start your counting, you want to start there at 508, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you get to the end of the 1335, it ends in 1844. You get to the end of the 1290, it gets to 1798. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, all right. So if you're writing that down, you're writing down your notes. We have those two dates already. 1844, 1798, beginning at 508. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then he also talks about this abomination, which causes desolation. Mm -hmm, okay? mm -hmm. And that actually happened in 538 of the Common Era. AD. So 508 is just 30 years before the um, 538. Abomination of desolation. Oh, the abomination of desolation. So we're counting back from 1844. So 1844 back to 508 mm -hmm. is that whole 1335. That's the ab abolition of the daily sacrifice mm -hmm. from 1844 back to 538. Is those uh, are those twelve hundred and ninety years? That is, um, excuse me, wait, let me make sure. Excuse me, is the twelve sixty and the twelve ninety? So going back from the twelve sixty lands us at five thirty eight. Mm -hmm. It is confusing. <laughs> <laughs> it is confusing. <laughs> but for those who track that kind of stuff. That's because we don't like math. You know, we, don't like, we don't like counting done. Man, <laughs> listen, money. like I said, accounting is not my thing. <laughs> but it does give you a pattern of events to follow mm -hmm. so that you see that what God was saying is true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you're counting and you want to see, you realize, okay, in 1798, the Pope was uh, deported and arrested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the end of the papal power um, of its like kingly power. Mm -hmm. Okay, you understand all of that stuff that happens. So you get that. The problem is that we don't have a big event that happens in 1844. Mm -hmm. You see an international fervor for mm -hmm. uh, preparing for the coming of God. Oh, you see yes. it more open. You see this worldwide movement, mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily have an mm -hmm. international event that happens right. at that time to yeah. tell us what, what really went down. So uh, groups have come up with some answers that have not necessarily been verified. I'll say it that way. Um, what we believe happened and all that. But the Bible tells us one thing that we're sure of, that that point that 1844 point is the time of waiting it is a time where we are awaiting the coming of god we understand that we are in a period of waiting but it is not a dormant period of waiting it is not a secluded period of waiting. Oh, come on sis it yes is a time of actively awaiting the kingdom of god and as his people doing those things yes that bring his kingdom to the people on earth who have not been connected with it yet. The great exploits, the great, the great exploits. exploits. Yeah, I was trying not to say that again, but yes, the great exploits. The time between 1844 and present to Jesus is coming is the time for the great exploits to happen. Yes. So it's not for us to be holed up and trying to figure all this stuff out. We really got it. We got the time period, but it's the time where we need to be actively and aggressively bringing the kingdom of God to the people of God because mm -hmm. we understand it won't be long. That's a good word. That's now, people were anxious, you know, they were doing this in 1844 and the 1800s, but as they got you know, further and further away from 1844, people became more relaxed. 
because mm-hmm. of the delay, the very thing mm-hmm. that Daniel was anxious about. This okay. delay, this long period of time. So people are looking again at the delay and wondering if God is going to be faithful to his word. Mm. People are wondering if he's really going to come. They're wondering what the implications of his coming really will be. Mm-hmm. And becoming very um, relaxed in where they are going about, you know, we're making ourselves great the same way as the kingdoms mm-hmm. in the Bible. But this is a time where we should be actively awaiting the kingdom of God by doing the greater works than yes. Jesus did in yes. his day. Yes. And it's beautiful here because when the angel says to Daniel, you need to go your way, right? 13, mm-hmm. go your way till the end for you shall rest and will arise again to your inheritance. Oh, wow. I just noticed that. Yes. So not only is Michael standing up to make the people in the future stand up, then God is assuring him through this angel, you're going to stand up too, Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> you just wait faithfully. Yes. You wait faithfully and go your way to the end. Mm-hmm. When the inheritance is given out, you're going to have your inheritance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I God mean, is dealing with Daniel. He's, he's trying to, because he, yeah, Daniel is getting, he's tripping with all these dreams and visions and like listen, worried about his people, as you said. Worry. And yeah. worry, I think, at a core because he knows his people are knuckleheads. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the thing is, as bad knuckleheads as they are, God's faithfulness extends even further beyond that. Like, there is no way that we can run it out. We can't exhaust it. Mm-hmm. And when we understand how faithful God is, then that allows us to rest. Yes. To rest in his promise. Yeah. Rest yes. in his faithfulness. Yes. To rest in our call now mm-hmm. to make the kingdom of God available to our brothers and sisters, to mm-hmm. make the kingdom of God a place that starts now. Yes. How are we bringing the kingdom of God to our neighborhoods? How are we bringing the kingdom of God to the people who we enter? Do they experience the kingdom when they experience us? Are we helping them to stand up? Yeah. 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 How are we helping other people stand up? Because mm-hmm. we are already standing up. Like, you know, the fact that we are here today shows that there's a little of that standing up that's happening right now. Mm-hmm. How am I helping other people to stand up? Daniel leaves that place. And the only word he has is go your way faithfully. <laughs> he doesn't know how exactly everything is going to come through. Look, he can't even tell anybody else about the vision. All you can do is tell. Because if he tells anybody else, it's going to scare them. Yeah. If he doesn't understand, they're surely not going to understand. Mm-hmm. So he has to seal up the vision. I don't know how we get to it, but he has to write it down and seal it up because the people are not going to be able to handle the word in that time. Mm-hmm. But when we receive it, all of this is mm-hmm. meant to be a, a promissory note that God will keep his word. Wow. All of this stuff is going to happen. Kingdoms are going to rise. Mm-hmm. Kingdoms are going to fall. Mm-hmm. People are going to, you know, people that you love are not going to make it. Mm-hmm. Only some of you might not make it. Mm-hmm. But it is a document that we can hold fast to that yes. in all of it, that God is going to be faithful to his word. He's going to be faithful to his people. He is going to make sure we make it. That, re- that refrain, yeah, that refrain just seems to keep coming out over and over and over again. Um, we re-recorded uh, Pastor Furman Fordham this morning on Daniel 7. And everybody, that I, I mean, I've seen Daniel in a whole new light, honestly. Yeah. I mean, it's just hard to not... I mean, I can so relate to Daniel as you have described him. Um, Daniel has been through a lot. He's concerned about whether God's faithfulness is going to run out on his people. And like you said, he ain't scared because he done been through the dude, been, dude been, been, in, been in the lion's den. He made it out. He's not, he's not too much scared of those things, but he is concerned. And I think that's what a lot of us are concerned about, especially when we talk about prophecy. And I want you to just lean in on this and, and then, you know, just summarize if you can. But I think when we teach on prophecy, the, the, the knee-jerk reaction is to worry 
yes. about whether we are ready. Yes. Right? Yes. And I think that what I have been hearing from you and from others is, is why are we worried about something that Jesus has already fixed that like, I need to put my focus on him rather than on whether I'm going to have a chip put inside of me or there's going to be a barcode over my head with the mark yeah. of the beast or uh, whether I'm going to be locked up in a concentration camp. Should we hoard groceries and go to Costco so that we're ready for the last days? You're yeah. saying that's not the response. Daniel was Daniel didn't even Daniel was tempted to go there and God yeah. was like, nah, right. Now, I think that um, we have to start telling the truth about ourselves. We can't get ready and we're not ready. Wow. Facts. Yeah. I'm not ready. Mm -hmm. I can't get ready. I cannot. I cannot. And it's very interesting. And you'll go through this in Revelation when, when God talks about dealing with his people for the end, that they have to be sealed. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, people think about a seal as like an official document, but that don't make no sense. Mm -hmm. A seal is a preserving element. Mm -hmm. It keeps what is inside safe. Oh, <laughs> oh bless his name. <laughs> the Bible is clear that uh -huh. when stuff starts going down, who shall be able to stand? Mm. The Bible says that even the very elect, if it were possible, would be deceived. That's right. So we have to be clear that there is nothing inside of me that can prepare for what's happening. I ain't never seen it. The, uh, Daniel says a time like that has never been seen mm -hmm. in the history of the world. It's worse mm -hmm. than anything. And if you just look at some history stuff, some really messed up stuff has happened. That's happened, I mean, yes. I mean, some pretty messed up stuff. So, so God is saying it's worse than Holocaust. Mm. It's worse than all of the atrocities that happened on the African continent and slavery. It's worse than all. All of that. It's worse than the flood, Myron. Mm, mm, What's mm. coming is worse than the flood. Mm, so mm. none of us, unless we have been sealed mm -hmm. by God, mm -hmm. will be able to stand. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, none of us, when we have been sealed by God, will be able to fall. Ah, oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his none name. None of us. When mm -hmm. we have been sealed. So our cry is God seal me. Mm -hmm. Not because of my goodness or my faithfulness. I don't have none. Mm -hmm. But by keeping your covenant, I'm asking that I'll be a part of the people who will be sealed. God seal me. And the Bible is clear that the seal of God is the Holy Spirit. Oh my oh, goodness. Yeah. It's clear. Fill it's me clear. with your spirit, God. It's Fill clear. me up with your spirit. So yes. that no matter what they say, no matter what they do, ensure for me, God, that I will be okay. I can't make it by myself. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, it's until we are honest with ourselves in that way, that there is nothing that I can do to prepare for this foolishness that's mm -hmm. coming down the fire. Mm -hmm. That we can be honest and say, the only thing that I can do is like, Daniel, look at this and be like, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, wow. Okay, God, what do I do? Mm -hmm. Just rest in me. Mm -hmm. Be sealed by me. Those who are sealed and have their names in my book, they're going to be all right. Even mm -hmm. if they're killed, they're going to rise again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's the concern. Seal me, God. Yeah, with your that's good. Spirit. Fill me up with your Holy Spirit. Yeah. And if you start praying like that, that's right. There is a boldness that allows us to do exploits. God's people don't run like they, oh, I'm in the South. These that's it. Don't run. That's, I see it right there. Yeah, people yeah. Don't run. God's people don't run. We that's don't right. We don't run from peril. We don't run from persecution. We don't run from hardship. But God's people can stand in the midst of flames and not be burned. But mm. as the three Hebrew boys said, but if not, our God is still able. I mean, God's people don't God's run. Man. Still gonna stand because if God allows me to go down, it was His will. Mm. I know I'm gonna get up again. The question is, do we believe that we're gonna get up again? Mm -hmm. If I believe I'm gonna get up again, then I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Do I believe God's promise mm. that when He gets up, that He gonna bring me up with Him? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And if He gonna bring me up with Him, look what y'all. What can y'all do to me? You can't touch me. You can't. Yes. You can't touch me. 
You can't touch me. If God has appointed this for me, it's going to be a blessing. And you I'm mean I'm not worried about the I'm not worried about the Illuminati, the trilateral None commission. I ain't, I ain't worried about. The Bible's clear that it's coming. It's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Period. Ain't yeah. nothing we can do to stop it. Mm -hmm. But it's going to. Oh, okay. Good. I got time. The, 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 the history, the DNA, the mark of God's people is being able to endure and survive hard times. That's right. That's right. It's that's right. DNA. That's in our DNA. That's what yes. we do. That's what we do. We yeah. We get in hard times and we survive them. That's what we do as the people yes. of God. Yes. Yes. And the whole of scripture is a document that proves that this is our DNA as people of God, that we endure hard times mm -hmm. and we endure Endure hard times and look, and we come out looking better. Oh my goodness! The Bible says we refine like gold. <laughs> when we come out, we look better. And yeah, 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 yeah. Stop running from hard stuff. Stop yeah. running from hardship. If yeah. God puts you in it, it's going to number one. You're going to survive it. Either you're going to survive it in the moment, or you're going to survive it eternally. There yes. is nothing you have to be afraid of. But if you're in it and God has ordained it for you, God is going to help you shoulder the weight. He's yes, going to he help is. you get yes, through it. And when yes. you come out, you will be like Daniel, a testimony to God's ability mm. to do anything. Mm. God, mm. anything but fail. And yes. God, oh my goodness, you have my permission to allow my life to be Hallelujah. Positive that you can do it. I want people to look at me and say, "Man, how is it that she's still alive?" <laughs> yes, yes, yes. How is it that she's mm -hmm. still alive? Mm -hmm. But it's not me. And we always want to make it about me. It's not me. Mm -hmm. It's not me. It's God's faithfulness. Thank you, I'm Jesus. Still standing here because God is faithful. Yes. I'm Still here with my right mind because God has continued to keep his covenant with me. And so I don't have to be afraid of anything that anybody threatens to do to me. God is going to show them what he can do through me. Hallelujah. Can you imagine, Myron? Come on, let me just shout with you real quick. We yes, got yes, yes. People yes. looking at you right now. Yes. And what they try to do to you in your ministry mm -hmm. and they, for all of the stuff that they try to do to you, you still stand. How Hallelujah. in the world is this man still standing because mm -hmm. of the faithfulness of God? Hallelujah. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I want my enemies yes. to look at me and say, man, God is faithful. Oh, yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Oh, be a witness to my enemies, Jesus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. you were faithful because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when they when they tried their best i'm still here yes 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 oh, did you ever see independence day man and they, <laughs> they, they, they uh oh my goodness independence day they have this spaceship that's out there in in the middle of somewhere and they're trying to figure out if a nuclear bomb would destroy the spaceship so yeah. they Charge the nuclear bomb, everybody's, I mean, they shout and they high five in each other and all this kind of stuff, but the smoke clears. And they said, target remains. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine that the enemy is looking at some of us? He done unleashed some nuclear bombs in our lives, some uh -huh. stuff that should have killed us, some Ooh. things that should have set us on fire, <laughs> things that should have killed our family. And, then, and when the smoke clears, I mean, he high and one another, high five and everybody. And when the smoke clears, he got to say, Target. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! God is faithful, y'all. I'm still standing. <laughs> God is faithful. <laughs> and when he is faithful in your life, they can unleash what ah! they can unleash. Come on in here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Target, target God. still remains. Oh, Lord, we bless you in here today. God, oh. you, we thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank oh, you, Lord. We honor you, Jesus. Thank oh, you. bless his name. You're so good, Jesus. Thank you, God. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. Yes. Woo. Yes. Yeah. Hey, sister, sister go, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray for oh, us. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Yeah. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now. We thank you that Woo. you are. Thank you, God.
Oh, Lord, we thank you that you keep your word. You keep your promises, God. We understand that your promises never fail. Oh, God, we understand that we are right here looking on this device right now because of your faithfulness. Yes, because Lord. Because of your mercies, we have not been consumed. Your compassion yes. fails not as new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, oh, God, to us. We want to say thank you, God. We bless you yes. right now in the name of Jesus for everything that you've allowed us to survive. God, we thank you. We survived the divorce, oh God. We thank you we survived the downsizing. We thank you we, we survived the death, oh God, and the cancer. We thank you so much, oh God, that we stand this proof positive that you keep your word. Thank yes, you, oh God. Yes, we bless you right now, God. Yes. So we understand even now that there is a time coming that we've never seen before. Yes. Many of us are afraid, Lord. We're afraid. Yes. Because we have been taught that there are things that we're supposed to do to prepare ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're asking you, oh God, by your Holy Spirit to heal us of that thinking, oh God. Mm -hmm. Heal our minds and our thoughts from the things that we have been taught. Mm -hmm. And I ask, oh God, with that healing that you would give us an overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. That yes. will heal us until the day of Christ, oh God. Yes. We pray that ceiling would not just keep us to eternity, but may that ceiling allow us to be able to go into our neighborhood goods and yes. bring the kingdom of God to men and women who are yes. dying every day. May we bring the kingdom of God to our families, oh God. May the family that we are a part of experience your kingdom because we are a part of it. God, yes. we bless you oh, and we yes. trust you, oh God. Yes. We Thank trust you. you through all of it. And yes. we believe, oh God, that you will keep it. Thank you, God. Thank we believe you. that you will keep your word. Yes. Keep us, oh God. Is the name, in the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you. Amen. 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 I mean, Amen. I just want to say to all the, the other present, whoever is left, uh, I believe it's Kamal Alexander, um, <laughs> that you have just witnessed uh, a disobedience in action. <laughs> This woman of God was supposed to come on here and give us a Bible study. Intellectual dissemination of information. But Lord, have mercy in here. <laughs> we just had church. <laughs> up in here. Uh, we just want to interrupt uh, this uh, regularly scheduled uh, programming <laughs> to have some church. <laughs> yes, sir. Can I get a witness in here? <laughs> hey, in the name of Won't Jesus. Won't he do it? <laughs> oh, oh, bless his name. Thank you, God. Brothers and sisters, this has been <gasps> Easy Prophecy. We thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, we want to encourage you to, um, somebody is saying, Lola, we need you to sing. Uh, ah! we, we, I mean, <laughs> brother, <laughs> uh, we got to lift that offering first. Um, <laughs> see, they always call for a song. You need to call yes, for they do. Yes, they do. Uh, what I need you to do right now is if you will join us uh, by simply going to our Facebook link uh, that says donate at the top. Click donate. Help us to uh, stop mass incarceration in the prison pipeline and the dropout factories. Here in Cleveland, Ohio, one of every two black males has a felony. We're trying to start an educational institution from double zero, early childhood education, all the way up into college level uh, with online college, as well as a tech college, to be able to help people not only to get information, but be able to get a job, be able to provide for their families. And in the meantime, we're trying to create a community of servant leaders, uh, one person at a time. You can help us by doing that, by going to our web uh, page, which is readysetgrace.com and going to give now and clicking there, or you can go to our Facebook page and click. There also will be a link that just popped up uh, um, where you can give uh, safely and securely to be able to help us to do that. God bless you guys. You guys have a wonderful day. Lola, I will see you. I guess I'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow. You see me tomorrow? I'll see you tomorrow. All right. All right. God bless you, everybody. And we look forward to Gamal Alexander tonight. Listen, uh, there's a reason we picked the preachers for the last day. <laughs> Gamal Alexander will be tonight teaching on Revelation, the 17th chapter. So uh, we look forward to, uh, to you joining us. Do you join us there? All righty then. God bless. Bye.